All right, we got another painting video stream for you. Uh, I'll get to it in a hot second. And meanwhile, uh, just chillax, get ready, get some, get some hydration going. And we're gonna kick it off. Again, I'm gonna do the traditional, the ritual practice of setting up the stream after I've gone live. The best ritual I've ever had to repetitively do. It was like the ultimate behind the scenes. Watch me and see how quick I can set everything up <laughs> as I'm live. Save. Do do. Refresh, refresh, buttons, click, buttons, I want to, I want to get painting already, I just want to paint. Hey Jackson, how you doing? Burbly, that's what I'm going to call you now, Burbly Spoon, Sam? I just saw you in Corridor's video on them then trying to make the best CNT series. Yeah, that's right. That has been <laughs> months of my life. <laughs> uh, button. No, I don't want to undo. Silly buttons. There we go. Oh. Look, it's Myro. Myro has snuck into the chat. Hi, Myro. Uh, Ninja, how you doing? Yo, yo. All right. Hey, everyone on YouTube. Thank you so much for subscribing and being in the chat. Uh, Ninja, and I, there's one more person in there that's not followed. But, hey, thank you for following and being in the chat. You said my name correctly. Oh, nice. Because it, because you you use the three as an e, so it's burbly spoon. All right, there's a lot of me going on the screen right now. <laughs> I might just turn the camera around to see how insane my setup is. Umbles mat. Do you ever paint any three D prints? I do. I really do. Um, the goblins that I've been painting, those are 3D prints. Um, I got this giant octopus that I want to get going on, but I gotta get, I gotta get other stuff done first. In fact, I'm gonna take the side camera. The, as you can tell in the corner of the screen, I have the best camera angle. Um, <laughs> Chib, yo, what's up? I'm going to, uh, let's switch cameras. There we go. I'm going to take this camera. I'm going to take it off the tripod and, uh, it's going to get a little handheld, but I'm going to show you my, my new like setup on the side here, which has granted me a lot of free space. All right. If my cables weren't freaking tangled. Cable master. All right, ready? And here we go. It's 
me. Can't you tell? It's me. Here we go. So, that's what the ship looks like right now, guys. We got three masts, the sails, and the ropes. Um, I want to say that I think everything I've done on the ship so far has been on stream. Uh, I have a couple of mermaids that have to go, like st mermaid statues, have to go on the edges over here. I have to do the metalwork on this and this one and then i gotta put the the nose of the ship on where it's supposed to be and i can take the statue and put her there and then i gotta add all the doors but you might notice i still have to paint all the cannons um and then there's a few ropes like over here on the front end that i still need to paint super simple stuff Oh yeah, then there's, uh, we got in the corner of the screen, we have the anchor that just needs to keep getting dunked in green wash. Um, for my doors, I've been uh, washing them off camera because it takes like a minute to wash them. And I didn't want to just like add more stuff to do on stream. Uh, so those are nearly done. I got to do like a brown, like a, a light brown wash pass on them and they're done. Um, what else is nearly done on the ship? I honestly think I got maybe two more hours left on that ship. But I'm going to do the rest of the ship off camera. Uh, reason being, I think I've streamed that ship a lot. And I should move on to other projects, such as all these sea creatures that I have. All those blue blue boys, and yeah, those, all those blue boys that were on the ship, those are sea creatures from Reaper that I have to do. Um, here, look, here's some. I've already glued them to base uh, Reaper bases, which I love having more bases. It's so helpful. Um, I gotta paint these. Uh, I have, and to follow up on uh, Umble's question about 3D prints. These are underwater 3D printed terrain, like scattered terrain. I really like these. I have uh, giant rock ones that are coming as well. So I'll be able to put some giant rocks in different spots of the terrain. But these are perfect for if you're underwater and you just want to mix up the, the coral or the, the, the look of the cover on the, on the battlefield. So I gotta paint those too. And I don't know if you noticed, but there was like a whole corner right next to the octopus where a bunch of primed bony skeleton pirates that I got to get to, too. And I haven't even primed the, like s sailors and pr uh, pirates, like living normal ones, because I don't have the priming, uh, I don't have the flesh primer because I used it all on the ship. And so that's in the mail, too. And I didn't order off Amazon. I ordered from uh, the Army the Army Painters website. One because Amazon. Kind of want to try to take as many breaks from Amazon as I can, but also support their website. And they're always in stock on their website. So that's that's what's happening there. Big update, yeah. Um, hey Johnny Boz, how you doing? Dude, what lens am I rocking? I am rocking, uh, 
$60 new air lenses. Uh, so this, this lens that you're seeing in the corner right now is a 25 millimeter. The one that I'm using right now in front of me is actually a Sigma autofocus lens. The newer ones are fixed lenses. They don't have autofocus. Perfect for Dungeons and Dragons. So I have a couple 35 millimeters and I'm trying to get another 25 millimeter. Uh, when I saw the corridor was making a D&D like video, uh, first thing that crossed my mind was you. Oh, thank you so much. But I suck at reading. Matteo? Matteo. I think it's Matteo. Tell me if I'm wrong. Don't tell me if I'm right. Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm very happy to see you working with the guys. Yeah, um, we've been working on Son of a Dungeon for almost a year now. Underwater 3D printing. Under yes, underwater terrain that was 3D printed. I didn't. I didn't print them. They were uh, printed by. When I paint them, I'll put them on the the on the screen because I don't know them right now. So, what are we going to paint right now? What are we going to get done? Well, I want to dunk... Where's my... Where's the center of my screen? There we go. No. Watch me masterfully use this camera. <laughs> there we go. So, we're going to dunk this guy a bit more. You can see the contrast of the metal from up here. Here, the whole thing has to be like that. It has to just be nasty. Um, I also have a few more terrain pieces over here that I've been gluing because they broke. I have a few of these. Since we're going to be going on a sea voyage, you know, I figured some tropical, tropical stuff is great. Uh, I have more coming in the mail, but they're all being 3D printed. So I'm going to work on this anchor and I would like to start painting these little guys. That's what I would like to do today. So, yeah, but Mateo is an easy name. It's just matter of me just figuring out how to use sounds with my mouth so that way I can say your name correctly. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to put these little blue boys away. Little blue dudes. Little blue sons. Okay. This microphone is up in my face. All right, so we're going to relax, we're going to chill, we're going to have a peaceful time. Letters are hard, words are harder. That's correct, Sean. And uh, we're going to have a good time painting. Um, again, I want to thank everyone who's uh, subscribed and following. Uh, because I have the chat set that, like, if you're on Twitch, you have to be a follower to join the chat. And on YouTube, you have to be a subscriber. It's absolutely free, and it just, it's awesome to see people supporting the channel. But, okay, if it was English, then more like Matthew. Mateo. I see, I see what you're saying. I was about to say, like, well, where's the H in the W? Now you're just conning me. <laughs> How's the sound for everyone? I got a little relaxing ASMR background stuff to help chill. I don't want to get too deep in the wood, in the weeds about getting the sound to work perfectly. I'm hoping it's at a decent level. Let me know.
Much better. So talented. I would like to uh, thank my talent, uh, or where my talent came from. Really, it's my parents and years of hard work. All right. So we're just tossing some more green. It's gotta look nasty because it's constantly dropped in the ocean. And the one thing you're never gonna do is clean an anchor. You're gonna let that thing rot. Stay back up. It looks pretty good though. Hey Charlie, how's it going? Dang it, I put my fingers on it. Alright, let's go dry this. Over there. This is one of the ways that I dry my brushes. Open palm style. Way of the wind. So we have technically two types of models that we're, we're looking at here. It's the best place to put them, right here. So, I want to, I want to hear everyone's thoughts. What's, what's some possible ways we can color these two? So we have the big, the big boss one and we have the little guys. Little guys are pretty much going to be the same. Um, big boss one, I'm thinking a little different. So we got. I'll give you a close up. So these are Reaper Minis. Dark green and Sai. Give them some green glowing. Okay. Tell me if this is crazy, but look up 3D models of ocean floors and 3D print them. That is pretty crazy. You know how big the ocean floor is? Pull some colors out and see what we got. Because I got uh, blue and purple wash. I think that's where it's going to go in the shadows. Um, so, yeah, some of that. Scaly hide. Eh, I don't know about that. We do have some Warlock purple, which is more like pink than anything. Oh, you know what? You don't know what yet. So 
since we have the Lazy Susan for d and I got a few of these. Some cloth potion mat. I didn't think it would be this clothy. I thought it'd be a little bit more fabric-y, um, like parchment. But I got three of these and that's gonna be some of the aesthetic. But underneath that, Uh, Reaper sent me this, which is perfect, I think. You got some, some paint from Reaper. Let's see what is in here. We got a lot of paint. That's what we got. Dirt sand, desert sand. Desert stone, polished leather, rich leather, saddle brown, perfect for the pirates and the skeletons, uh, nut brown, char charred brown, okay, we got a blue one here. I see violet. Runic purple. Ooh, that's interesting. Stikes purple? Sticks purple? S T Y X. Night sky indigo. Ooh, frost blue. That's an interesting color. Um Glacier blue. Tropical blue. Ocean blue. Void blue. So we got some nice ocean colors in here. Hey, Pigeon Killer. Hey, thank you very much for the compliment. Son of a Dungeon has been a lot of hard work. I can't, and we're so close. So close to finishing it. <laughs> Uh, if you scratch the cloth, you'll get more treasure map. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I like the pinkish gills. Okay. Pink gills. Hot rod flames. Uh, brownish green body with red fins. Oh, that's interesting. So I have the... See what we got. Let's pull out some of the the Reaper mini, the Reaper paint. Since we got these, Woohoo! Nearly dropped them all. We got a lot of blue options. But we were talking red. Um, I got pure red. Right there. Light black. Dark gray. I feel like those two might be the same color. Uh, <laughs> Definitely some glowing from the deep sea vibes. Maybe the big guy with iridescent wash, like a pearl wash. Oh, okay. Hmm. Part of me wants to make the, the big guy more of like a shellfish. Who's the big one? Yeah, 
And here's the little one. So the big one doesn't even have scales. So I feel like that's more of a, a shellfish kind of feeling. Bottle next to the red one looks good, like a good combo. This one? Which one is this? Ocean blue. <laughs> Don't apologize about your grammar. You're good. My grammar sucks. My, my spelling sucks. If it was good, I'd be an, uh, an academic. So if he was a, a shellfish, would we want more of, honestly, I think desert sand um, for the shell. That's, that's an interesting effect, especially when you think about the, the blue wash or something that goes over it. A rare blue lobster. Roll perception check. Okay, so let's start making some choices here. Is there any other colors in my other paint set that makes sense? I don't think purple makes much sense here. I don't think scale hide. What's some other color ones we got here. We got goblin green. We got green skin. Green skin might be okay, but I think I want to go for that lighter green effect. That bright green. We also have moon dust yellow. Hmm. If I put a blue on it, since they're primed dark blue, if I put a blue on it, it's going to be a lighter blue. So I know that just going in. So let's remove some of these darker blues. What do we got? Glacier or tropical? Honestly, I really like the frost. Which blue, uh, left, center, or right? Left, left, center, or right? Sup, slurp? How you doing? This is a really good camera angle. I'm just admiring my own work, sorry. Yeah, we're going to play with some green, but I'm just asking for the blue. I think in center? I got one center. Anyone else got an idea for the blues? Right. Rare blue lobster sounds interesting. Hey, you know what, Slurp? I ask that question every time I go live. <laughs> yeah. I need to sit. So you're about to hear a really rickety squeaky chair. Center blue looks good. All right. That's two centers. 
I'll save the frost blue when I do a white dragon. Okay, so we got these two plus the sand for the big one. Um, this is red and this is uh, technically pink, but it's called Warlock Purple. But we all can tell it's pink, right? Okay, so... Because if we put a... We need to put a pink or a red. Because... Then we have a triadic color scheme effect. Yellow is kind of too much. Pink, though, really, you get some offset colors going on. Let's see what pink actually looks like. Pink looks good on the, the palette. I'll go with pink. Alright, so we won't start with the big one yet. Start with a little guy. Also, can I even fit? I can't even fit the big ones on this handle grip. That's fun. can kind of see what we're dealing with with those three. Are the bases magnetic? No, they're not. Um, I love uh, Reaper's bases, though, because they are hollow, which means they can hook, but that also means you can put a metal piece or a magnet in it. Uh, so there's room to upgrade two magnetic pieces. I really love that. I would love to have a bunch of stuff that's magnetic. Okay. So I'm looking at I'm looking at the, the fourth one on this while you all look at these. I'm trying to think about where the colors are gonna go. That's interesting. So its face has kind of a hard shell right before the scales. You see that? It kind of has a hard shell effect on the face. Beta client, when do you stream D&D? &D? Red eyes? Um, we've been taking a break on the D&D &D stream. Uh, a lot of just Personal scheduling has ne been needed for the last few weeks, has helped me, been able to paint a bunch of stuff, uh, but we're going to get back on it sometime next week? That's my, uh, that's my theory. Where did you get bright blue primer? Uh, these are... The primer is, uh, why can't I ever think of the company name? The Army Painter Primers. So if you go to army thearmypainter.com, you can go under their primers and all their primers are different colors. 
I really love the method. Like, my skeletons, I primed the bone color. My goblins are primed green. It's really great. Okay, so... Eyes will be definitely pink. The scales can be green, but how do I fade the scales? I'm gonna have to play with that and figure that out. Okay, I have an idea. Let's start with the sand. Yeah, hey, you know, band thingy, um, scheduling D&D is hard, um, especially, especially during a pandemic. Um, it's it's hard to make sure we all have the time for it. And then when, you know, personal things should happen, you gotta respect people and you gotta make sure there's time for them to take care of that stuff. So that way we can have time to play D&D. It's not ideal for like a show or a production, but you know, no one's getting paid. Um, if everyone was getting paid like Critical Role, we would be able to hit a certain day per week, you know? But that's not the case, or at least yet. You can head over to patreon.com slash fablesd20. <laughs> what did I miss? Uh, there's murlocs now. Yeah, so we're painting ninja. You've been a lot. You've been gone for a bit. So, yeah, we're going to paint these little murloc guys. Oh, you can't see them. This big one. And we were just trying to figure out the color scheme for them. I want to say 23 Mr. T-Bone? Is that how I say your name? Mr. T-Bone? If that's how I say it, I just want to say. That's right, another chill painting stream. All right, white bone for the head, maybe? Yeah, I'm thinking because it looks like they have some type of hard shell around their face. Let's do that. And then the big guy just has more of that shelling effect. Uh, across the body. So I'm going to approach it uh, in a similar way that I approach the goblins. It's just do one color at a time across all the minis. And I'm not going to use that brush. Get rid of these blue brushes. So if you look at my description on YouTube, there's a cheap you, uh, cheap good or cheap usable brushes and um, that's what these blue ones are they don't last but they do the job and you can get like 50 for Dude, having a session of Call of Cthulhu? Mm. Tell you what, if we get to if we get past a hundred patrons on Fables, I'll i I'll do a Cthulhu like mini campaign on Fables of Refuge. I'll I'll DM it. That that's a promise. And I'll go all out. I'll spend some extra Patreon money on doing some set decoration and making some props. 
because that's just awesome. T-Bone, uh, you're usually on YouTube as Tyler. Oh, hey, Tyler. <laughs> uh, we're doing some video uploads on a different YouTube account right now. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Brush is wet. Here we go, everyone. Put the paint down. Am I in focus? You know what I could do is lift my monitor. Yes, I'm in focus. Alright. There's a loose hair. There we go. Fixed. Okay. There's just one hair off the brush that likes to pop off and it scares me. Yeah, I've, I've come to really like priming with colors. I started with doing that with my goblins, and now all there's all the green skin for my goblins are done, and their bases are green. And I love having colored bases. I really don't not. I love the craft of making super cinematic bases. I love the craft of doing that. But I don't like using it as a dungeon master. I like having my minis be readable at a quick glance. So I'll have each one of my players have a different dominant color. And then I, as a DM, will have groups of a spe specific color. So as you notice, these blue creatures are going to have blue faces. And on camera, that's going to read super well, too. This brush might just be too big <laughs> for what I'm trying to do. Using now the... Um, the Army Painter Insane Detail Size Brush. It's pretty small. But it's also, it looks like to be the perfect size for this. Does it go down to the bottom jaw? No, the bottom jaw is flesh, it looks like. Looks like there's a good opportunity to change it up. Hey, Atomic Revolution, I'm just happy you're here painting with me. Painting alone can kind of get sad sometimes. Painting with a friend, though, it's always a great time. So, yeah, the, the top of their skull... Since I 
Lanza has a bone look. Let's just undo this to their teeth. What is going on with his mouth? So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think that works. Because if you were to face that head on, that'd be kind of scary. I'm going to go for the outside of the gills. The same color. So it looks less like a helmet. more of a shell. My brushes are... Troopers. OSL? I think I know what you're saying. I don't like painting in light unless I have it motivated by like a torch in their hand. I did not print these, uh, Mr. Cubo. These were uh, sent over by uh, Reaper Minis. So you can. Ooh, I have an affiliate link on YouTube. Let me paste it in the Twitch chat. The affiliate link that they so kindly gave uh, allows you to support the channel while shopping for minis. Reaper sent like two thousand dollars worth of minis. And that includes the ship. <laughs> so I have a lot of minis to get through, and it's all for not all. It's about eighty percent for uh, Fables of Refuge's next story chapter.
That's why I put in the title, Refuge Spoiler. This one I might be able to use the bigger brush for. Oh yeah. I feel like I'm painting a, a water velociraptor right now. your fingers. <laughs> there we go. Oh, putting the sand, like the bony sand on the water, looks so good. The contrast between the two colors. It feels right. That looks terrifying. Taking some back down to World of Warcraft days. Oh man. I remember as a kid, I would play World of Warcraft on a laptop while my dad would play it on his computer hooked up to the big screen TV. And we would just play together for a whole weekend. That's what we would spend a weekend together doing, is just playing World of Warcraft. I think my dad got more into World of Warcraft than I did though. He ended up having like six characters and they all have like a mailing system to send each other different quantity of items so they can all build their own thing. He was super proud of it. I think now my dad's favorite hobby is paintball. He's about to retire. He loves paintball. He's a vet, so you know, pulling out a paintball marker and shooting up some friends is nostalgic to some degree for him. Do they have like bones sticking out of their elbows? Oh man, what a color to pick. I didn't even notice it. Like, you see it coming out of the elbow? 
Got the toes, got the claws. Those elbows. Mmm, vicious. Oh, it's super intense. When me and my dad play paintball together, it's super intense. <laughs> We've gone as far as early drones, like early on, is getting a drone and just flying it over the map and just seeing on our phone uh, what the shot it or like what's going on in the battlefield. And then someone shoots down our drone with a paintball. The drone breaks. It's like, whatever. That was fun that we were able to do that that one or two times. Come on down, where we eat paint. It's delicious. Man, what a color to start with. Some nooks and crannies that just make this thing look so evil. Funny is I don't see the nook until like almost after I paint it. Look at the back of its legs. See that? Painting the bone, the sandy bone color. Those claws and viciousness to come out. Oh yeah, I've I've I haven't been able to play those bigger games where it's like two hundred people versus two hundred people in paintball, reenacting World War Two and stuff. Oh man, I, I wish I could have. Now I'm just stuck playing Dungeons and Dragons. I do have a World War II D&D &D, uh, mini campaign I want to play. I want to DM it and get some cool stuff made for it. Uh, I just need help, you know. Patreon.com slash fablesd20. Um, no, but seriously, I do have that campaign I want to do. It, it's not World War II. It's just inspired by uh, Saving Private Ryan. I call it uh, Saving Prince Ryan. It was just flexible. I thought it was loose. 
Okay, so I got a lot of bone coming off of it. Cool, let's move on to the next one and put bone on that one too. Here, let's move some of these paints so you can see what's going on. See the paint. There. Oh yeah, I have, just think of Saving Private Ryan, and think of all your favorite scenes, and that's essentially the encounters of the whole story. <laughs> yeah. With my own story and plot and stuff, you know, to make it fit. But, yeah. It's my favorite, it's, it's one of my, like, lately my favorite things to do is dissect a movie and go, what would this be in D&D? It's kind of what the point of the podcast uh, classes and sessions all about, which is also on the Fables YouTube channel, where my friend Tway and Austin we take a movie or a TV show and try to figure out which characters are what class in D&D &D. and we just have a discussion about it right now I'm prepping for a one shot um, that's going to be where I think we're recording on Halloween or Halloween weekend um, the one shot is me DMing the alien RPG uh, we're gonna have some special guests on there uh, some people from the D&D community, some people not. For example, we'll have Yaroshin, and we'll have Jake Roper. And I think it's going to be, the goal is to make it like a, uh, a three-part story, three-part game. And uh, it's going to be released on Patreon. And then the, the first episode will be public. But yeah, I'm prepping for that right now. Band of Brothers could be a sort of campaign. Yeah, that, that's a definitely a long campaign. That's saving Prince Ryan to the max. Vsauce Michael here. Where are your fingers? <laughs> I 
But yeah, while I've been prepping for the alien game, um, you know, learning different mechanics and different stuff, I've actually seen multiple times, plus my own ideas, then seeing my own ideas in other systems uh, on ways I could improve as a dungeon master for Dungeons and Dragons. Same thing with the Cthulhu system. Um, there's a lot of ideas on how to make the Cthulhu system better for 5e. And I think across the board, the success of the Cthulhu system and the alien system points out how much more of a, uh, not scarier, but deadlier experience and deadlier story and stakes is kind of desired in tabletop gaming. People want to experience that high stake uh, fear and Alien and, Cthul and Alien and Cthulhu do it best, and I've been learning a lot by reading those books. So yeah, uh, I would. I'm the. The goal is to. Once Patreon can get to a, sustain, a higher, more sustainable level. I want to be pumping out more crazy one-shots and really try to push the medium and push what I'm able to do as a filmmaker and a storyteller. Just making this one massive Patreon shout-out. <laughs> hey, I'm not... I normally cringe at my own shout-outs, so... The fact that I feel comfortable doing it right now, I feel, makes me kind of happy. <laughs> you learned the, the deadly part of Cthulhu today. Are you playing, Ninja, are you playing the Cthulhu system? Or are you playing 5e Peter Sanderson's 5e Cthulhu expansion? getting on TikTok. I think I, I tried, I opened up TikTok for the first time, I think a week after it started. And I had the, the sensation of walking away from a slot machine at Vegas when I turned it off. And I really disliked that feeling. So I deleted the app. <laughs> I was like, no, not today, devil, not today. But now I know a bunch of people and a bunch of my friends are on TikTok, which I think is funny. I think I'm hyper aware of that stuff because of all the stuff that I learned doing the vlog at Corridor and the burnout I got from doing that. Every other day, 10 minutes. Oh yeah, if it's the masks, it's just the normal Cthulhu game. Yeah, the percentage, that percentage system. I am not a fan of percentile, percentile, 
brain work. I'm not a fan of percentile die. Jarrett loves it. If you go, if you watch Fables of Refuge, and whenever Jarrett tells me to roll a percentile die, my brain just like hurts, and I'm like, God, ah, because <laughs> we roll the the two d10s together. <laughs> And we talk about that uh, uh, off camera a lot too, where it's just like, uh, he would come up with an idea of a percentile thing and I'll be like, yeah, how would I do that since I don't do percentile die? And I would figure it out. I usually will try, I'm really good at taking something from uh, like a different mechanic, such as like cover or, um, dark vision I'll take something that's mechanically already there so that the I know that it, whatever I'm doing is not broken and I'll just reskin that rule Oh, thank you very much, Dan. I'm happy that the channel is doing so well, too. It's not always the case when you, you pass off a, pro uh, a project like a channel to somebody else that the channel actually propels forward and the, final, the last thing that you did on the channel uh, is sustainable. <laughs> I'm so happy. It, it would have hurt my, it would have sunk my heart to the depths of the ocean if the channel was just to die. Because it was so much work. But if I hadn't have left, I wouldn't have been able to work on Son of a Dungeon. Still busting through these the sand bone stuff. So we got claws mostly done. Here we go. There. And I just gotta get his heel. It's heel, whatever it is. And uh let's move on to the next one. This like batch painting process where you do one color at a time across all the minis, it's not as exciting in the sense of like, um, you get one mini really far and it's like really cool to look at. But the problem with doing it that way is when you have a bunch more and you turn over and you're like, oh, I gotta do that all again and again and again. And it gets kind of daunting. Um, doing it this method really keeps the sanity going. Speaking of the Cthulhu game though, like, I found a really cool Cthulhu mini. I found a couple of them. And I really want to buy them and get them on the, the channel. So, you know, motivate me to give you that. Motivate me to give me that so I can give that to you <laughs> by signing up on Patreon. Dude, I am all over this Patreon shout out today. I don't know what's, what's wrong with me. It's not stopping. Cool, I think this guy is looking good too. It's like a little blue bony monkey. A little 
blue monkey velociraptor. Fish, fish monkey velociraptor. It's terrifying. Well, no one ever makes that creature come to real life. Nick and Ren keep the channel feeling binge-worthy? Good. Nick does a lot of hard work on that channel. Blake, I am doing well. I'm painting minis, directing a D&D show for Corridor, and I'm running my own D&D channel. I'm doing great. I'm also healthy. I just have to work I just have to work like seven days a week. But that work is Dungeons and Dragons, so I'm not gonna complain. There's a lot of dead space over here. I think I can move the camera to it right here. Oh, that's such better framing. God I'm such a good filmmaker. Okay. <laughs> It is, uh, uh, 3.5 is more crunchy, and I started playing D&D in 3.5 slash Pathfinder. Um, the crunch is nice. Not all the time, but the crunch is nice. It, it feels more real when you do it. Um, I mean, there are rules from 3.5 that we have in Fables of Refuge. I like playing with some rules that are in 4E, such as um, minions or intelligent skills. So in 4E, for example, when you create a character, the number that is your intelligence modifier, if it's above zero, that's how many extra ability uh, proficient skills you can get on top of everything else in the build. But if it's below zero, um, you have to start taking skills away. Um, there are some skills in 3.5 that are very specific. Pathfinder uh, 2.0 has even more. And it's just crunchy. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm somebody who likes to sit in the middle. There are times where I like the crunch, and there are times I like to sum it up and kind of narrate through it. But rolling dice and figuring sh stuff out, that's that's a good sweet spot. Um, so 3.5 is a, it's a good system. It's strong. Um, I don't think 5e is the best system. If you've ever played uh, Kids on Broom, or kids on brooms, I mean, plural. That's a really good system. There's a lot of ideas in there that are similar to the alien RPG. Um, <clears throat> and then there are. Oh, thank you very much. Jinzo Mask 656. Did I say Jinzo correctly? Um. The, like, Kids on Brooms and 
alien share the the fact that there are no there's no armor class which I really like instead or there's no fixed armor class instead uh, you are rolling against the attack so I attack you I roll my attack all right you have to roll essentially defense you know um, and if your defense beats my attack you, the attack doesn't work in alien because of the dice system it's a little different but at the end of the day it's like easy to add that to D&D and I think it's a really cool concept it's like roll an attack cool all right are you going to take the hit slash kind of block are you going to take the hit and block or are you going to try to dodge you're going to try to dodge roll a dexterity saving throw you're going to take the hit roll a constitution saving throw and if your saving throw is higher than the attack roll then the attack doesn't work do I like the alien movies I do. I watch uh, Alien 1 maybe one to two times a year. Alien 2, I'll watch usually on Halloween I'll watch it after I get done watching Alien 1. But if I'm watching Alien 1 not on Halloween, I usually don't watch Alien 2. Uh, but this year I've been watching Alien 1, 2, 3, and I, did, I didn't finish watching 4, but I watched Alien 1, 2, 3 a lot, and then I watched Alien 1, 2 even more this year, because I was like, man, I really want to play this game. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, prob it's my favorite horror movie. By far. It's beautiful. It's creepy. Um... so good. I tried playing the Alien Isolation game, uh, which I tried picking up again recently, and I was like, this is a solid game. I really love the game, but it's terrifying. <laughs> I do wish I had a PlayStation 3 to play um, Alien Isolation on PlayStation, because on PlayStation, if you have your your PlayStation camera hooked up, you can lean your head to tilt around corners in the game, and it'll also use the speaker as your real world sounds, as the 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 sound wave coming from your uh, PC in the game. I've never I've never uh, seen a game uh, try to do that other than Alien Isolation. And then, it, because everything is modeled to scale, there was a, a VR version for a hot second. I would, I would crap my pants playing Alien Isolation <laughs> in VR. Spooky looking. Oh, I didn't do his teeth yet. Fun watching your D&D &D games, hard work. Uh, you're welcome. For, hard work is easy for me. I just work. <laughs> uh, get back to work. Have a good day. Always want to make some kind of modular armor system. Like helmet gives you plus one AC, breastplate plus two. But 5e doesn't uh, 5e d that doesn't work. Um, yeah, it does and it doesn't. So, armor in general is just a, a plus number, right? You can make 
magical items or non-magical items. So like a full set of armor. The 5e does a really good job at summing stuff up. But you can if you spend the time to break down the armor and the weapons mechanic a little bit, you can make armor work a little bit better. So you take for example if you were to this is my brain just working if you take what I'm saying about having a dynamic armor class where you roll against an attack you're going to use your shield and your armor because those are bonuses to your AC if if you wanted to, you can say, if you're not wearing the full set of armor, you have disadvantage on the defense roll. If you're wearing the full set of armor, you have it. It's a full. It's a, you know, you roll normally, and then there's a room for how do you get advantage on that roll? You know. Is it? If the attack has disadvantage, you have advantage. So it's exponential in your favor. I don't know. I have played around with weapons ar and armor, though. Because in my binder, something that the alien system does really well that I really like. And I saw that uh, Five Torches Deep does it, too. Is it changes the weight system. So your weight in 5e, Dungeons and Dragons, is your strength ability score times 15. So there's a lot of math. It's not, not hard math, it's just a lot, it's just more math. Um, Five Torches Deep sums things up a little bit different, and I think it's a lot more fun. And Alien does something similar, too, where um, items aren't weighed by pounds. Uh, a one-handed item is like one load. It's one weight, one point of weight, you know? And how many loads, one-handed items, you can carry is equal to your ability score. Just that. So I can carry 20 one-handed items. Two-handed items count as two loads, two points. So it gets very, like, practical in thinking. I really love that. Uh, Alien works in a very similar way. Rather than math, you're just like, that is my budget, this is how much I'm carrying. And it doesn't get to the ridiculous numbers, because I think that's what's wrong with pounds or any any realistic measurement of weight is not a lot of people think that way so having a clear cut abstract system somehow makes more sense i don't like counting 132 pounds to make sure that fits in my 157 budget but I will have no problem counting. I have, I ha I'm using five loads in a 20 load system. I think it has to do with a lot smaller numbers. And then for your stackable items, you use your intelligence score. So a potion would be, they use the word supply. So a potion would be like three or four supply, right? And my intelligence score is a 10. So if that's three supplies, a potion of healing, that means I can carry three of them without you uh, while staying under one load 
And the reason why they use um, intelligence score for stackable items is because it's measured by whether or not your character was smart enough to supply it with the things that they need. Where's my focus? Where's my focus? I think this guy's nearly done. Oh, I got all the ankle work. And so, when it comes to the load in the supply game, I've adapted it to D&D for myself. It's in my DM binder. So I know, based off the material it's made out of, fabric, glass, wood, metal, leather, um, how many points of dirt, of load that is. And I've written that down next to the weapons. Um, and then there's also durability. Can an item break? How many points of durability does it have? So you, that there's, to kind of follow up on the, the 3.5e question, you know, there are small ways you can add crunch that's a, a hint of minutia, a hint of tracking all these mathematical puzzles and details into the game that feel very D&D without bogging the game down because tracking tracking those details is fun for a lot of people and to take it out of the game entirely is I don't know not the, the best move um, there's also <laughs> Also something I like doing is, which I'm going to do a lot more in the future, because I have only started tinkering with it, is, um, there's a hair, is I won't be doing proficiency bonuses. I'm going to take that away and instead uh, use proficiency die. So it's just another dice you roll versus just a static number that you add and the the sides of the die grow as you get better i i think it feels a lot more dynamic and plus again players love rolling dice See you later, burbly spoon. Barebly spoon, burbly, barebly spoon. I said it right the first time and I got it wrong after that. It feels very similar to a uh, slot system. I play Darker Dungeon, in a, a modded 5e version and durability slots some other additions yeah it's very similar it feels very much like um something that tabletop games can learn from video games you know since rpg video games grew from tabletop they became their own thing <clears throat> there are there are lessons for the tabletop to learn 
Sometimes tracking too many details may or may not hinder the plot experience for players. I don't mind it. But I can see why people don't like certain aspects. Yeah, I think it's in the DMG. It's... The creators of D&D &D love the, the proficiency die more than they like the static die. Because there's a chance of failure. You know, if, if it's always a static number, I can always guarantee that I'm going to win. Simple as that. Like, if I have a plus nine, always, to sleight of hand, your, your conflict that you as a DM have made, it's not a conflict. I can easily get it. <laughs> but if it's a die, it's not a plus nine. It is your ability score plus whatever you roll on your proficiency die plus the d20. So you could roll some ones and luck is not on your side. And I think the hard part about rolling ones in D&D &D and kind of in any game is that it's hard to roleplay failure and keep the story moving. I think that's just naturally hard. Jeebus? Is that how you say your name? Uh, have I ever seen the movie Hostel? I have seen the movie Hostel. Um, I recommend that no one watch Hostel before you travel. If you're planning a trip, don't watch that movie. Or the sequel. Don't do it. If you're safe at home, and you're not traveling anytime soon, Hostel is a good uh, horror movie. Horror torture movie. Um, <laughs> there's a Daz. Love fables, my dude. Thank you for being creative. Hey, thank you for loving my creativity. <laughs> like, that's sincerely awesome of you for just loving the work. Um, something from uh, Kids on Brooms that I really like. I wish you could turn it into D&D, &D, but it's a really hard thing to do, is your ability score, rather than having a ability score, um, you have a different sided die, depending how good you are. So if you're really terrible at something, that ability is actually a D4, um, with the ability to explode and reroll an add uh, on the high number. And then if you're really good at something, the skill is at a d20. I really like that idea. 5e is just not built for it. It'd be... It would... You would... It's it's a great idea for a kids-friendly Dungeons & Dragons. 100%. Because you can just make up a bunch of stif stuff for the kids and let them learn with those dice. It makes total sense. Um, but as an adult... We like to follow certain rules and have certain mechanics, and it'd be really hard to play 5e with that. Have I looked at... 
Uh, Savage World, super weird system. Core attributes level is D4 to a D12. Uh, you still have a potential to roll trash. Yeah, that's why I kind of like it. Using dice instead of, instead of static numbers is a lot of fun. Like, my girlfriend, Alicia, uh, Alicia she mid-maxes her ranger on her, on her home game. She loves it when she gets to roll on an attack with advantage on a favorite enemy <laughs> with a magical arrow and she just has a Yahtzee cup full of dice and she just rolls it. Slows the game down. Makes her day. Oops, I'm supposed to be over here painting. Sorry. It's painting closer to my face. I think it, it's less about having crunchy stats to follow and more about like people just like it. You're gambling. People like gambling, but we're just gambling with story. Have you played pre-written modules? If so, which have been your favorite? I have played pre-written modules. As a as a player, I've I've played them. Um, I don't know which ones. Uh, as a player, I don't know which ones because as a player, I don't think you should always know which module you're playing. Uh, as a DM, I've DM'd. And still DMing Minds of Vandellen. But at this point, it's not even Minds of Vandellen. <laughs> um, the plot is still that, you know. I, I just shot a Talking Head DM video about this concept. Is that plot is the beginning of your, video, of your story and then the end of your story. In the middle of the campaign, it's all character. So you just have to take off... The module is good for takeoff, and the module is good for landing. And you just gotta make that work. Like, I'm incorporating Cthulhu into the Minds of uh, module. I'm co incorporating uh, Raving Queen. I'm incorporating a wit. I've changed so much that isn't there, but based off like silly questions or ideas that my players have change the world it's a better idea than what I'm going into my session prep with like there's a green dragon you fight and it's at a it's a wizard old wizard's tower but in the module the wizard's tower is just one floor my, my druid asks um how many stories is the tower? We come to a conclusion that's about four stories. <laughs> so I turned it into a four story tower and then I turned the entire tower into a puzzle. And they defeated the dragon and they're barely unlocking the puzzle, but the puzzle leads to a whole new dungeon that never existed in the module that triggers big important plot stuff doing dealing with the characters backstories tying them into the final baddie uh evanator no evan evanator evanator was the next big thing in the pipe um next big thing in the pipe other than the minis that I'm painting for Refuge, I would say the Alien one-shot. I'm waiting for another month of Patreon to come through. 
and I'll be able to buy some more props and stuff for it. Uh, that game is with Rebecca Hansen from, uh, oh my god, I'm blanking on her podcast. She has a D&D podcast. And I feel really bad that I can't remember it. I won't, I'm gonna look it up, because I feel really bad. <laughs> Dude, I have 42 missed text messages right now. It's crazy. Oh, my phone. My phone's gonna die while I'm holding it. Uh, Venture Forth. Rebecca is from Venture Forth. It's a wonderful, high production valued um, D&D campaign. Um, and I will have Yaroshin, who is... I, I don't know if, Yaro, if Aaron needs an introduction. He's amazing in the D&D space. And I'll have uh, Jake Roper from Vsauce 3 while I uh, DM it. That's kind of the big thing in the pipeline right now. And the Refuge, the next chapter in Refuge. Then after the alien one, honestly, I think it's going to be about prepping um a campaign on the channel where I'm going to DM for uh, a, a handful of episodes versus just a one shot. Jarrett has a really cool idea that I want to try out. His his idea is Carmichael rules, which I agree with the sentiment, but the concept is uh, since I, I'm constantly tinkering with 5e and playing with different rules, it's just like one shots where we play with different mechanic rules and kind of see what are the outcomes and we talk about it. There's a there's a there's a few things that are just in the pipeline. But the limitation is just time and energy that I'm able to give to make it happen. fishy. Done. I see some mistakes on this one. Okay. Cool. Little fishies are done. Yeah. Let me see where all these, all these massive text messages are. Make sure nothing's super important. Okay. So we have the bone faces of these guys done. Um, we're going to use the pink for their eyes. This big one I'll do slightly separate because they're going. This big one's going to have its own color scheme, technically. Um, so the scales are probably going to be green, and on the next stream, I will tackle that. But I have to wrap this up, everybody. I love fudging around with 5e rules. Oh yeah. They're a lot of fun. The whole game's designed for it. Let's see if we can keep up with the chat. Uh, sure, if you travel. Plot 
plot to start and end. What happens in the middle is fun roleplay. Yep. Uh, lamp, lamp juge. Seeing, seeing Mike being so creative on ideas is invigorating. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> this is naturally how my brain works. If you can create your own class, what would it be? I've actually created some subclasses, and two of them are on D&D Beyond right now. Um, I need to spend time and make the rest. So I started with making a paladin subclass for fighter and a ranger subclass for fighter. They don't get magic spells. They just get magical abilities. Um, or for the archer, it's more of like abilities inspired by the spells. Um, I like the idea that a fighter chooses to become something versus starting right away as something. Uh, I have a noble fighter subclass and that is kind of like the classic fighter. I put all the good classic ideas of fighter into that one. Then I have the otherworldly fighter. So essentially a warlock fighter. It's really cool. Really wicked. Especially if you put that fighter next to a warlock of the same patron on the same party. Um, and then I have a wizard fighter subclass. Which can go two ways. One with spells, which is like... Uh, one, you get spells, and the other one, there are not spells, but instead magical abilities that make you more like Indiana Jones. Recently got in battle after hitting level 5, and I got knocked unconscious first round by two normal hits. I'm a life cleric and had to slightly above average health. Yeah, it's fun that way. <laughs> um, some One homebrew rule though I really like is kids on brooms, adversity tokens. I really like it. It's good for kids, but I also really like it for adults too. Adversity tokens is... Um, adversity tokens is a plus one token that you get every time you fail a roll. Um, so it kind of... Danger fate. So instead of handing out... Uh, inspiration... You hand, you, every time a player fails at something, they get an adversity token. So mechanically, you are providing a failing forward system. And they can spend that plus one on whatever they want. They can use it to help another player hit the DC so they can succeed. They can use the token for themselves so that way they can hit the DC. Um, and they can stack up and hoard on adversity tokens. And what I really like about it, I know it feels kind of like easy mode, but honestly, it, it's not. It, it makes sure if you're... Adversity tokens is a really good idea when you want your players to feel heroic that failing now means succeeding next time. Mechanically. That's what it means. Um, it changes the help action a lot. And I really like it that way. I think... I like using advantage. But I like advantage being a more rare tool. Because you can't do anything up on top of advantage usually. Put some more green on this guy before I go. Mm. 
But that being said, adversity tokens is a great way for kids to learn to not be afraid of failure. And not just kids, new players. Uh, it's great for new players because then they're not afraid to do stuff and accidentally roll a one and ruin the game. They could still have fun and they can succeed another time. Imagine playing a sports game and failing it and then gaining, learning that failing was okay because you were able to learn from it and do better next time. That's what adversity tokens do. It's kind of cool. Yeah, and discourage cheating because you're rewarded for failure in a very small mechanical way. All right, I, I did some more work on the anchor. The anchor looks dope. The anchor looks so good. As someone who stacks ones, <laughs> that would be a game changing for me, yeah. All right, so wrapping it up. I didn't get that far with the, uh, the fish people. The bones actually seem to be a lot more detailed than I thought. Also, I got bones done on like four fish people. So I say that's accomplishment because it's progress. It doesn't look super special now, but when I get the wash on that, it's gonna look great. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to the stream. Thank you so much for, on YouTube, subscribing to be in the chat, Twitch, being a follower and being in the chat. Um, I mean, anyone in Twitch, if you're a subscriber, thank you very much. <laughs> um, so I'm finished up for the day. Normally I would stream again on, what is it, today is Tuesday? So the plan would be to stream on Thursday night and uh, Saturday morning, but Thursday and Saturday I'm going to be out of town and... I'll probably the next stream I'll have is either Monday night or Tuesday. Meanwhile, got a bunch of painting content on this channel, got a bunch of DM workshop videos and more Fables of Refuge. And when I get back, I'm going to make sure we can get back into Fables of Refuge as soon as possible. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Head on over to the Discord. Head on over to Patreon if you want to chip in. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me.